Hello, and thank you for tuning into this week's Mayor's Update. As always, we have a lot of important information to share with you here this week, so please feel free to share this video with your friends, family, relatives, and anyone else who you think might find this information helpful over the course of the coming week. I uh, want to start off by congratulating Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, and the Governor's Council for being sworn into office this past week alongside the state legislature with our local delegation with Representative Slotnick and Senator Ann Gobi. Uh, uh, Council President Kaczynskis and I had the pleasure of attending those swearing-in ceremonies uh, and making sure that Gardner was well represented in Boston those days and that we will continue to work with our new elected officials uh, in every branch of the state and federal government to make sure that Gardner uh, does get our fair share and a voice at the table. That's something we've really made a priority here in Gardner over the course of the past two, two and a half years and something that we do promise to continue as we move forward into this next year and our second century as a city. Uh, so my office will be working very closely with Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, as well as all of our other elected officials uh, to make sure that if there is any grant funding out there or any uh, policy changes that need to be made or things that are affecting Gardner, we can communicate those on a very collaborative basis with the state to make sure we're getting everything we can here for Gardner. We've been very successful with that in the past. Uh, and it's something that we're looking to continue in the future. And with that said, I would like to congratulate Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito and Governor Charlie Baker uh, for their eight years of service and their partnership that they've had with us here in the city of Gardner. I don't think we've had a governor in, or a Lieutenant Governor in Gardner as much as both Governor Baker and Lieutenant Governor Polito were uh, and wish them well on their next endeavors on behalf of the city. Uh, we want to remind people that dog license applications are now available for 2023. You have until the beginning of March to license your dogs here in Gardner in order to avoid a penalty. Uh, if you can remember, last year, Council General Lowitz and I jointly proposed an ordinance to waive the dog licensing fees for every individual in the city age 70 or older. Uh, so if you fall into that category, uh, you can contact the city clerk's office. However, just because you don't qualify for the initial registration fee for the dog license does not mean you are not subject to a fine and penalty if you fail to register your dog. What we do here in City Hall is working with the city clerk's office and the animal control officers. We take last year's dog registration list and lists that we receive from the vet's office, compile them together and compare those with who's licensed their dogs on March 1st. And then the notices get sent out if we notice that a dog has not been relicensed or we get a notification from a veterinarian office uh, because state law requires that every time a dog gets a rabies shot, a copy of that rabies certificate has to be sent to the local city hall in which that dog resides. Uh, so we go off of the information from the vet certificates that they send us. And again, last year's registration list, compare those together. And that's how we know who's registered their dog and who's not. If your dog has passed away, um, one, I'm very sorry for you uh, as someone who has a dog themselves, but two, also, uh, please let us know. We, last thing that we want to do here is send out a violation notice for a dog that is no longer either living in the city or uh, who has passed away. So if you let us know, we can avoid that altogether completely. Uh, again, we want to make this as collaborative and efficient as possible while following the requirements that we as a city are required to do under state law. So again, uh, license your dog through the city clerk's office. We are looking at potentially getting this as an online system uh, in the future, but for right now, you can contact the city clerk's office. Again, they'll help walk you through all of that process there. Uh, tax bills for the third quarter were also sent out uh, at the beginning of the year. Uh, so if you have not received yours yet, please check with the city tax collector's office. You don't want to get into a spot where just because the mail uh, didn't get to you, that you then didn't pay your tax bill and then get assessed a fine. Uh, the way that state law is written is once we send the bills in the mail, that's the city's uh, end of our participation until the money is collected. If the mail doesn't get to you, that's legally something that the city cannot address and you would still be subject to the fines and penalties required by state law. Uh, so we want you to know that those have been sent out and issued. So if you have any issues and have not received it, please let the city collector's office know uh, so that we can get that resolved and get that taken care of. We do get some sent back to us because of change of addresses or just other issues that come up. So again, reach out and have that collaborative conversation to be proactive on that if you have not already received your tax bill. These tax bills do reflect the new tax rate that was approved by the Commonwealth and set by vote of the City Council in December. 
Again, if you remember last year, uh, we had the tax anomaly where the higher values went into effect at the beginning of the fiscal year, but we could not adjust the tax rate to fit those values until December. So you actually should see a decrease in this quarter's tax bill from what you were paying in the first two quarters in July and October. Now for the January and April bills, you should be seeing at least a reduction in your tax bills. What we're seeing on our end is the average single family home should see a reduction of about $420 uh, in what they were paying for the first and second quarter with what they're paying for the third and fourth quarter. Uh, that's not the same for everyone. Again, that's the average. So while some are a lot higher and some are a lot lower, that's based on the average single family home being valued in Gardner at about $286,000. Uh, so that's based off of that. And if you have any questions on that, you can contact the city assessor's office or the city tax collector's office or my office and we can help answer those questions for you. Uh, just a reminder, two excise tax bills will also be going out shortly uh, because that's done on an annual basis. Uh, we'll let you know more information on that once those fully get sent out. Uh, we want to remind people that the Ward 3 City Council position is still vacant and the City Council is still accepting letters of interest for the position of Ward 3 City Councilor. So if you are a resident of Ward 3 or you don't know what ward you are in, contact the City Clerk's Office. You can find out what ward you're in. If you are in Ward 3 and are interested, the City Council is looking for letters of interest. Uh, per the City Charter, if no one ran against the incumbent in the last election, so the November 2021 City election, the City Council appoints the, uh, someone to fill out the rest of the term. Uh, that's all spelled out on the city charter, which you can find on the city's website, www.gardner-ma.gov, under the transparency section of the city website. Uh, and you can see the full process out there. Uh, by simple majority vote of the city council, they can fill that seat uh, based off of those who express interest. Uh, the city council can also nominate someone from the floor. There's a whole process there that you can see in the city charter. But either way, right now, uh, the purpose of letting you know this is that if you do live in Ward 3 and you are interested, please uh, send your letter of interest to the city clerk's office. Uh, and then that packet will be compiled of everyone who submitted a letter of interest for the city council to review at their first meeting in February. The deadline to submit your letters of interest is February 1st by set by the city council president. The centennial kickoff event that was scheduled for New Year's Eve did have to get delayed due to the warm weather outside. Uh, you can't really have an event scheduled at an ice rink if it's 60 degrees outside. Uh, so we do want to apologize uh, that we just simply could not control the weather. But I do want to thank the DPW for actually setting up the rink beforehand, uh, even if it wasn't able to be used over at Jackson Park. Uh, they have rescheduled that event for Saturday, January 14th at the same time the previous event was. And at this time, even if it is warmer, there will excuse me, still be some type of event, even if it's not at the ice rink. Uh, the Centennial Committee will be finalizing all of those details today uh, when this is filmed. So next week's update, we will have more information on that event to give out to you and to the public via all of our different channels that we have. Uh, lastly, while we are in this room, I want to remind people that the State of the City Address will be taking place this coming Tuesday, January 10th at 7 p.m. There will be some seating up here in the Council Chamber where I'll be giving my address, but there will also be a live stream of the address in City Hall's Mayor Perry Memorial Auditorium. Uh, and that will be the main entrance for the public. So if you're looking at joining us for the State of the City event, you can park in the Knowlton Street parking lot and enter through the same door that the Ward 3 election or any other events that we have in Perry Auditorium would be off of the Knowlton Street parking lot. Uh, again, the live event will be streamed down there for those who are either if we fill up up here in the council chamber or for those that just don't want to be around people and are looking for some space that's more distance. Uh, again, so the stream will be down there. And then after I am done my State of the City address up there, the City Council President's response to my address will take a place in Perry Auditorium and the reception that is catered will follow afterward in Perry Auditorium as well. Uh, if you have any questions on that, or if you would like to RSVP to the State of the City, you can contact my office at any time. Uh, you certainly do not have to RSVP. You can certainly just show up and attend. The RSVPs just help us count for uh, food counts and seating counts so we can figure out how many chairs to set up and where people would be able to sit. And lastly, I just one of the other reasons I wanted to close here in the city council chamber is one of the new additions to the chamber right now is actually hanging over my shoulder here. This is the official act from 1923 that formally changed the 
town of Gardner to the city of Gardner, acknowledged by the Secretary of State to say that the state legislature had voted to approve the town of Gardner's uh, vote that they had at the election to officially transition the government. Uh, so this will be here. This is also the quill pen that the Secretary of State back in 1923 used to sign that bill there too. Uh, so as an acknowledgement of our city centennial celebration that began on January 1st of this year, uh, this will be hanging here in City Hall for the public to view. However, that concludes this week's Mayor's Update. As always, if you have any questions on, on anything that was mentioned here, you can feel free to contact my office at any time. And I look forward to seeing as many of you as would like to attend at the State of the City Address on Tuesday, January 10th at 7 p.m. here at Gardner City Hall. Thank you very much and have a good day.